So when you first look in here, you'll see the camera, the camera, um, and there's a couple other little random parts uh, and the manual. The manual is okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to understand. It wasn't really written very well. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to make this instructional video video for you. Uh, but it is a good reference if you need extra help later on. The first thing you'll notice is that it looks a lot different than kind of the standard um, SLR camera. It is an SLR, um, but it is just a little bit different. This is a waist level viewfinder. A lot of people really like these, but they're hard. They're harder to use um, or harder to, to expose your images correctly because you don't have a built-in light meter in these. But to open it, um, you'll notice that there's, there's going to be a little switch um, on the top right here um, with a, kind of like an arrow. You'll push it to the side and it'll kind of spring open. Um, when the cap is off, uh, you'll be able to look down uh, onto that glass plate on the inside and, you know, and you'll see the image that you're going to take. Um, there's also another cool little feature with the waist level finder. Um, if you push that button again, uh, a little magnifying glass will come up that you can kind of um, you can put your eye closer to and peer down and get get more precise focusing. Um, when you're done, you push on it, it folds back in, and then you can fold these little wings uh, back down, and then uh, that will collapse back together. Loading um, and unloading your film is kind of I think the, I think the trickiest part of using a medium format camera because it is a lot different than a 35 millimeter. And, and it's helpful to know how to do it. So that's one of the first things I wanted to show you how to do is how to load your film. You'll notice that there's a little, uh, a little six by six symbol here and kind of a little lever. You'll pull that lever up and you'll twist it and that will release uh, the film insert. When you pull on it, it'll come out and you'll notice um, there's, a, there's a spool there will be a spool on one side um, and then kind of an empty space on the other. You'll need, to, um, you'll need to transfer the spool from here up to here. Normally there will be a, your roll of film that you exposed will be sitting up here um, on top. Um, and so uh, you'll take that out um, and then you'll need to transfer this spool up and, and that'll make, it'll make more sense here in just a second. So you'll pull this little wing up, you can pull the spool out, put it back down, and then back on top, there's another little wing. You'll pull that one back, and then transfer the spool up, and then and then uh, just close it back, and make sure that the that the little um, pieces are aligned. There's kind of like a little um, uh, like a slot, almost like a screwdriver, kind of that will fit into that spool. You need to make sure that that's lined up so that it'll it'll spin, um, spin the spool. Then you'll take a your take your new film, or roll of film that you're going to be putting into that, into this film insert um, and putting it in, uh, it's, it's pretty particular, so you want to make sure that you, that you do this correctly. You'll pull that wing back up on the bottom, put, this, uh, put the fresh film in, uh, latch it closed, and you want it so that, that when you're pulling on, the, on, this, on this backing paper um, that it'll be coming out from underneath um, and then you're actually you're going to take it and wrap it around. Um, you'll see a little metal guiding plate right here. You're going to push down this uh, pr this black pressure plate that kind of makes sure that the film stays tight as you're taking pictures. Push it down just a little bit and fold um, the film underneath this little metal guiding plate right here and make sure that the film stays nice and straight and tight as it's going through the camera. Um, and you'll take it and there's going to be a little paper flap on this film right here. You're going to take it and put it into the into the film spool that you transferred up, um, and insert it until that to that nice crease is all the way there. There's going to be a little um, uh, there's like a little knurled knob on the side, and you can only spin it one way because um, it only it will only allow you to spin it one way. So um, you'll kind of spin it with your finger. Uh, just a little bit to kind of get it started um, and kind of keep a little bit of pressure on the on the film here just to keep it uh, nice and tight as you're as you're rolling this film on. Um, once you have it started um, there's a you'll notice that there's going to be an arrow on the on the film roll you're going to want to line it up um, and you're going to want to line it up right to the to the top of this of the top of the uh, of the roll, so you'll you'll spin this with the, that little knurled knob on the side until those arrows 
are nice and lined up straight, straight up top like this. Um, and then you can stop right there. Um, so now your film is, film is loaded and ready to go back into the camera. So you'll take this film, the film insert, make sure that you're putting it the right way. It's, it's pretty easy to see which way is the right way. The curved sides are going to be, are going to be uh, towards the back, lining up like this. And you'll just push it in. Um, sometimes, if, it's, if it doesn't quite uh, engage all the way, um, there's another little, um, like a little knob here on the side. Twist it just a little bit, and then um, it'll help the, uh, the insert slide back in. Push on it, and then turn this little net lever, and then uh, and close it, and that kind of locks it in place. So now your film is inserted and ready to go. On, on this other side, uh, you'll see a little window. Um, it should be empty, um, and you're going to rewind it, or you're going to wind these, uh, these knobs right here until you see a number one. Um, the key ads are a little bit finicky, uh, and this step is pretty important. Um, so what you want to do, there's a little window on the back of the film back right here. You're going to pop it open, um, and that allows you to kind of look in at the film back paper. Um, so go ahead uh, and wind this until you see a number one. Um, once you see a one in this window, uh, I can see it now, um, then uh, you can go ahead and, and take a picture. To take a picture, you're going to remove this dark slide, which is this little metal sheet. Um, just pull on it nice and gently. Don't, you don't want to bend it. Um, once it's removed, that will allow you to take a picture with the camera. Um, the shutter is up here, so go ahead and, and snap a quick picture um, and rewind the camera. That will pull the film. Um, it's all the way. Uh, you'll twist this knob until you see uh, a line in the window. Um, and it should be, uh, it, it will be a little bit tricky to tell um, with this camera, um, but when you're looking in there, you should see two, uh, two, almost like two minus signs. That kind of tells you that's that's your starting, that's where the film has started, um, and you can start exposing uh, good good pictures now. Um, so once you get there, close this little window, um, put everything back together. So close uh, those little arrows. Um, insert the dark slide back into the camera and now we'll go ahead and, and talk about um, how you take pictures and also about the uh, the metered prism finder. So one of the first things you have to do is you're going to have to take out, uh, when you're ready to take a, take a picture, you have to take out the dark slide um, and you can pull, you'll pull on this uh, little metal ring right here until the dark slide comes out. You want to make sure that you put this in a safe place, uh, somewhere where it won't get bent or dirty, um, and this, this piece is pretty important. I usually would usually put it into back into my camera bag um, and just make sure that I remember where I put it. Um, once you have the dark slide out, uh, that basically means that the camera is ready. Um, and uh, when you're ready, you can, you can uh, select your shutter speed. And there's a, this step right here is really important. Um, you need to make sure, basically whenever you do anything with this camera, you have to make sure that the shutter is cocked. Uh, that means that, that this, um, the knob here on the side is cranked over as far as it will go. Uh, if you try to do anything with the camera, um, like taking off the film back, or taking off the lens, or, um, or anything else, without having the shutter cocked, you could damage the camera later on. So you want to make sure, basically, before you do anything with the camera, that it's cocked. So just give it a little twist to make sure that, it's, that it doesn't move anywhere. Um, when you're ready to adjust your film speed, uh, you'll pull out on the knob and twist it to select the film speed that you want. Um, so here's 60, 125, 250, 500, 1000. So you'll basically, once you get ready, once you select your shutter speed, you can let it go um, uh, and it should kind of click into place uh, and it won't spin anymore. And then you should be ready to take a picture. Take off the lens cap, adjust your focus, um, and then you'll push the shutter button on the front of the camera. Okay, so the shutter went. Now one really important thing is that you never, ever, ever adjust the shutter speed without, without uh, cocking the shutter first again. So you don't want to pull out on this knob and twist it uh, to select a different shutter speed without cocking it first. So let's go ahead and cock the shutter. So we give it a nice good twist. It should go basically a full circle 
and you want to make sure that it goes all the way. It should click pretty audibly at the very end. Um, and go ahead and give it another couple little twists just to make sure that it got all the way in place before you select, select another shutter speed. If you don't, if you don't cock the shutter before, before you select a shutter speed, um, you could damage all the little gears and internal mechanisms inside the camera. So you really want to make sure that you do that. Um, uh, so now that the shutter is cocked and we selected another shutter speed, we can go ahead and fire another picture. And then we can cock it again before we select a different shutter speed. So it's, it's fairly simple. Um, another thing that you want to make sure uh, or that you're aware of, um, you can also select the different apertures right here on the lens. Um, 2.8 is wide open and the lens will, will adjust itself to the, to the 2.8 pretty easily. But if you're stopping down to one of the, to one of the smaller f-stops, f22, 16, any of the other ones, you're going to want to push this little lens preview button right here on the side. Uh, it looks kind of like a little blade sticking out on the bottom of the camera. Um, push it and that will, uh, that will close down the aperture to the one that you selected. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't push on this little uh, blade right here when you change your apertures, uh, and you take a picture, um, it might it might not uh, register that you changed the aperture uh, for you. So, this is the metered prism that's included uh, with the Kiev. The important thing to remember about this is that, that the camera and uh, and this viewfinder don't communicate. So, when you figure out the right exposure on uh, with the prism, you'll have to set it onto the camera. Uh, you have to take those take the numbers on this little dial right here and set, set the camera to, mat, to match to make your image exposed correctly. So to, in, to turn or to put this viewfinder on, you have to take this one off. Um, in order to do that, you'll have to take the film back off. Uh, the film back also has another little, uh, another little lever, a little button that you push to the side. Um, and when you do that, it'll release these latches and it'll kind of, uh, it'll, it'll fold down. Uh, you want to be really, really careful when you're using this camera um, not to touch that metal shutter on the back with anything, uh, your fingers or anything that's on a, on a table uh, as it could damage that shutter. So be careful when you're taking the film back off and make sure you, you set, the, set the camera body down in a safe place uh, when you don't have the film back on it. But to put the film back, back on, there are these two little uh, clips on the bottom right here. And you'll, you'll set the film back, um, back onto those so it lines up. Um, and then you don't want to push on the film back to make it latch closed you'll want to take that button and push it again or, push, or pull it over to the side and then uh, push it the rest of the way onto the camera body and then release it so it locks on. If you push on it uh, and make it click on, um, it can kind of wear down those two little hinges uh, and those hooks there um, and it could damage the camera body if you did that a lot. Um, once you have the film back off, the, uh, the waist level finder, if you just take it, it should just slide right out um, and then you can set that aside. Um, the, the metered prism uh, will have like a plastic, almost like a lens cap on the bottom. Uh, you'll slide that off um, and then go ahead and slide the prism onto the camera. Uh, once it's on, you can go ahead and take the film back and then reinsert it. Once you have the prism on here, you notice it's pretty big. Um, it's not the, most, well, not the most pretty prism ever. Um, but but it is pretty effective and it works, it works pretty well. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll talk about how to adjust this, uh, this little prism finder. Um, you'll notice a couple different things. One is a little window that you can set your ISO speed of the film. Just twist it until you see, um, see, until you see ISO 400 right there in that little window. So I can see ISO 400 in there now. Um, which is the, the, the film speed that we have in the camera at the moment. Um, and then there's going to be a little, bit red, little red arrow. That little red arrow, um, you'll line that up with the aperture you want to use. Right now I have the lens set at 2.8. So I'll set 2.8 uh, to that arrow right there. Um, then you go ahead and you'll look, through the, you'll look through the viewfinder and push this little red button. When you push that little, little red button, it'll turn the, turn the viewfinder on for I think around 15 or 20 seconds. Um, and then you'll go ahead and you'll twist uh, the shutter speed dial, and you'll see uh, you'll, there'll be two red dots. There will be one red dot on the left side and one red dot on the right side. Um, if just the left dot is showing, that means it would be um, underexposed, um, so the picture would, be, would come out too dark. And so you're going to want to keep adjusting this. Um, you might adjust it and then the, and then the right dot would come up. Uh, that means the, that you've overexposed and it'll be too bright. 
Um, when you when it's set just right, both of those little dots should light up. Um, uh, sometimes they don't, and you can kind of uh, fiddle with this, and one dot will light up, and the other one will light up, and you'll kind of know that okay, maybe my film speed should be around, uh, or my shutter speed should be around 30. You'll go ahead and you'll take those numbers that you calculated. Um, so 2.8, we have the shutter, we have the, the lens set at aperture 2.8 already, and then we can go ahead and we can dial in um, a shutter speed of 30. So we would just take uh, the, the little knob here, open it up, um, and find 30 right there. And now we're ready to take our picture. So it actually works pretty well. It's pretty quick, um, but it's not it's not going to be as quick as using kind of like a more traditional SLR camera.